Okay. Uh, good morning, friends. I am going to take you back to the Bhuj earthquake, which taught us several lessons. Some of the professionals may have also forgotten the lessons they have learned. And I hope most of them are following the lessons we learned from the Bhuj earthquake. Before I start my lecture, I would like to give you a humorous incident which took place. Most of you must be remembering our grand old man, Mr. B. T. Unwala, Behram T. Unwala, who was our consultant in Ambuja Cement and was also the ex chief engineer of Associated Cement Companies. Mr. Unwala was very seriously ill on the 25th of January and we were all worried about his health. He was uh, down with cancer. But next day, I went to visit him at the hospital and he was or he looked at me and was almost in his normal spirits. When I said, Mr. Unwala, how are you now doing? So he smiled at me and said, oh, last evening I met God. And he told me, there's going to be a big calamity today. That was on the 26th when I visited him. And therefore, I am not going to call you up. There is some more time for you to spend in this world. And there came the huge earthquake. And several people died, several people were injured, etc. But his humor even on the deathbed was highly appreciated. He was a very witty as well as humorous person. Incidentally, Mr. Munwala expired just before 9-11 calamity took place in US. And he made sure that now he will visit God all by himself alone and all the people from the 9-11 calamity will come later. On the day 9-11 calamity took place, I just returned from his funeral and my neighbor gave me the news that the World Trade Center in US, New York, are attacked by the terrorists. Already one tower was in smoke and flames, the other tower was at accident or the attack took place a little later and I could see it live on the television. The year 2001 therefore became very close to my heart because we lost a great man in Mr. B.P. Olmala as well as we had the and where many of our citizens died. Now I can start my lecture.
ओके अर्थक्वेक इज इट अ मैन मेड कैलेमिटी नाउ व्हेन एवर एन अर्थक्वेक टेक्स प्लेस वी ब्लेम गॉड दैट ही इज रिस्पांसिबल बिकॉज़ दिस इज अ नेचुरल डिजास्टर but i am going to ask you a question before i start my lecture is earthquake a man made calamity and we will answer it at the end of the lecture whether it is yes or no earthquake causes waves of various forms originating at the center of disturbance which we also often call as the epicenter and causing horizontal and vertical ground movements or vibrations since horizontal movements are generally much greater than the vertical ones they cause structural damage and therefore these structures have to be designed to withstand these movements or acceleration in the horizontal direction a simple thing is if you throw a stone in a river or in a steady water you will see the ripples going away up to a certain distance where the stone has landed is the epicenter of the disturbance and the ripples are like which are very identical like the horizontal movements created by the earth depending on the direction of the force the two surfaces of a fault which occurs in the ground may move in a vertical direction in an earthquake this when it moves in a vertical direction it is called a dip slip dip slip fault sometimes if the force is greater in the parallel directions of the fault the two surfaces of the fault slide past each other laterally this movement generates most of the world's earthquakes if it's a vertical movement it is much more serious but most of the earthquakes are caused due to the lateral movement and this is the effect you can see here an earthquake in turkey in august 99 17 august 99 created this effect and you can see the distortion in the railway tracks and in japan another earthquake took place after the buja and one 26 january the japanese earthquake took place in 23rd october 2004 and this located the railway track japan being famous for the bullet train which they use as a mode of transport this earthquake was of a large measure almost 2.8 richter scale shinkansen is the bullet train which runs at the speed of 300 km per hour and it was for the first time that a bullet train with passengers was delayed due to the earth. 150 passengers were on board but no one was even injured it was the first time that a train with passengers was derailed since its inception in 1964 so that shows the preparedness of the japanese people to face a quake and there were no injuries also to the passengers earthquake is divided into 
five zones as per the Indian standards. Zone number one, which has the most severe earthquakes, they are shown in red on the map, generally on the Himalayan region as well as in the Indian region of the Himalayas and also in the Kutch or the Bud area where our earthquake took place. The next zone is shown by dark green which is all along the Himalayan areas uh, which is uh, slightly more serious than what we have in Mumbai and various other cities along the western coast as well as some portion of the central India shown in yellow that is zone 3 then the zone 4 is in blue and in the interior parts of India and some in, along the eastern coast shown in white is the mildest of all the five zones showing the earthquake in the region in white. Now according to which region you are going to build a structure, you decide what is the force and what all precautions you have to take in the structural design of this structure. India mainly consists of villages with structures not engineered by engineers or architects, generally engineered, I would not say use the word engineer, but they're generally constructed by masons, fitters and carpenters, depending on their experience and judgment. This is one such location after the Bhuj earthquake at Chobari village, where you can see that this lively village was turned into a heap of rubble. Then another small town in the Bhuj area, the city of Anjar was badly destroyed and I was told this earthquake took place on because it took place on the 25th of January 2001. There were children marching on the road to celebrate the Republic Day and some of them were injured. and the structures were very badly damaged. The non-engineered structures are generally masonry in mud mortar with tile roof, masonry in cement mortar with tile roof, masonry in cement mortar, mortar with RCC slab. The engineered structures are load bearing, Masonry with RCC slabs, some of them are existing in Mumbai, built during the British days and in several parts of India. Then low rise RCC structures and high rise RCC structures. Well, when a calamity like the Bhuj earthquake takes place, definitely non engineered structures become the first victim. But surprisingly, even engineered structures collapse. In city like Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad lost about 35, 30 to 35 buildings because of this huge earthquake, surprisingly occurring more than 330 kilometers away from the epicenter. The city of Ahmedabad suffered a heavy blow where the high rise and low rise structures collapse. I will be showing you some of the photographs of the both the types of structures, non-engineer as well as engineer, and uh, trying to prove my point 
why some of the engineered structures collapse. The stakes in Bhuj earthquake were very high. Number of collapsed and badly damaged structures were around 5 lakhs. Property loss estimated to be around 250,000 million rupees or converted into US dollars, 5,000 million US dollars. Human death recorded was about 13,800. Injured were around 167,000. If you compare this with the developed countries like Japan, uh, this is a very, very serious to be looked into. You can see here non engineered structure which have collapsed with an RCC slab on the top, rubble or brick masonry bearing the load and it has turned into rubble naturally people living in these structures will not survive generally as per the code you have to avoid vertical joints in a masonry you have to give two head joints so that the bonding is very good between the rubble or the brick or whatever you are constructing the masonry with because toothed joints are well suited as compared to vertical joints where the building can or the structure can collapse. In a rubble structure, generally recommended is one through stone has to be put over half a square meter of the wall. At the same time, RCC bands have to be provided at the plinth level, at the lintel level, and the roof level. They tie the structure together. They anchor, the stones anchor the wall in such a manner that it does not collapse. But it's almost, this package looks almost like a food parcel going or a parcel going when you travel along with you, but tied strongly with the steel bands or with the string or the rope for which is used to tie the normal parcel. But here we have the RCC bands tying the structure together. The rubble structure, you can see here how the band is made. All the designs are specified in the codes. I don't have to repeat it. Here is another one. The main walls and an intermittent wall again tied with steel and RCC band using 8 mm dia bars and 6 mm dia bars to give rigidity or solid behavior of the structure which will not disintegrate in parts. Same. Sketches are also given in the code of practice where they recommend very strongly for the traditional type of construction an RCC band at the plinth, an RCC band at the lintel level and because this is a leaning roof of GI or AC sheet, so it does not require a band to hold it. Giving a band like this is not advised, so avoid this. Always have a band which is horizontal and straight. Similarly, if there is a band to be provided 
in the central wall because of a lintel you can provide it a straight way at the lintel level instead of providing separate band for the roof level tile. Some elementary precautions in design one has to take. All parts of the building should be firmly tied together like a package which we are transporting and tightly braced so that the building moves as a unit and does not disintegrate. Center of the mass and center of gravity should preferably coincide, but not many of the architects and engineers agree with me. Opening should be provided as per the codal provisions and away from the outside corners. Building is very, very vulnerable when there are big openings at corners. Load bearing masonry should be braced using mullions at plinth. These RCC bands are called mullions at plinth, window sill, lintel, and roof level. Corners of the masonry should have vertical RCC transoms. These are also like miniature RCC columns connected to the horizontal mullions. So this way you have mullions in the horizontal direction tying with the transoms in the vertical direction. Window openings should be designed as per the sketch shown here. I won't go into the details. The sketches are all self-explanatory. Where L is the length of the wall. If you don't provide the necessary openings in the way shown in this diagram, then you ask for trouble like this. You can see here big openings of the windows, very small walls in between the column and the windows, which got crushed during the horizontal movement, especially which is more severe on the ground floor. Shown here is again a photograph of a large opening at the corner of the building. Accommodating huge French doors and windows, but not adequately structurally designed and designed, resulting in an engineered structure collapsing. Failure of an infill masonry, you can see here the RCC was reasonably strong, but due to the swaying of the buildings and absence of the mullions and transoms, the walls gave way. You can see here. Uh, these are very dangerous because they can fall on a human being or ultimately result in a serious crash of the whole building. You can see how the wall between the columns act during the earthquake. This is a masonry wall without mullions and run zones, so it gets crushed and if the earthquake movement is more serious, then this wall will give way in an RCC building, engineer building, we provide RCC walls at the lower levels, which are also called as shear walls. Many a times, a common man or even a common interior decorator do not recognize this as a structural part of the building and they demolish the RCC shear wall during the addition alteration resulting in a serious collapse of the building and 
that also sometimes occurs without an earthquake it can occur due to the high wind velocity today these days even hurricanes and storms are common and can cause a disaster so please don't touch any rcc wall which is a shear wall and can endanger the entire building you can see the masons doing work providing millions rcc millions during the construction so this is of course a masonry wall with rcc millions but sometimes we make a full rcc shear wall also This is how the Maharashtra Mandal looked like. Fortunately, it was in Gujarat and it did not collapse. But you can see here the beams. Sorry. The beams are eccentric with columns. I would say that this is the design of an eccentric structural engineer for providing such beams eccentric to the columns but fortunately the intensity of the earthquake and maybe the quality of the construction was good so this building remained intact except for a slight damages here and there after the bridge earthquake this was inspected but did not collapse fortunately now the same earthquake uh, means with the 1968 richter scale took place in japan on 23rd of october 2004 which is also shown here 21 people died 1500 injured 2800 homes were completely or partially destroyed and more than 1000 buildings were damaged if you compare this with what happened in bhuj just before i have shown you the figure 13800 people died in the bhuj bhuj earthquake more than 160000 people were injured 5 lakh homes and buildings were destroyed completely or partially and many more were damaged what i have to be very really careful because uh, the zones which are shown in 4 and 5 region There were several buildings built on the slopes of the Himalayan ranges, and they are definitely very unsafe if they are not properly engineered and constructed with good quality materials. You can see here this is one such building. Of course, there was no earthquake. which has occurred in this region so it is standing tall what has to be very careful about the foundation in the soil strata in construction of building if the b soil which is shown here is having a better bearing capacity than the a soil then because the strata is not very horizontal you need not construct the footing at the same level because one footing will less less on a softer soil while the other footing will less on a harder soil so you must provide footings at the level where identical bearing capacity is available like this this is what happens when things 
or foundations are designed at different levels and not considering the bearing capacity of the soil. I'll give you one example. Of course, I don't have photographs to show that. In Andabad, there were buildings which were built by a builder which had four stories. They were naturally supposed to be engineered structures. The four years later, there was another series of buildings built by the same builder, but he had to build them on a filled up line. In order to save the cost of soil investigation, he remembered that his four story buildings on properly stabilized soil strata, he had to go to a depth of four meters for the foundation. So he thought that he can go in the filled up soil also to a depth of four feet, sorry, not four meters, four feet, and build structures which were identical in their design, four story. And to his surprise, when the Bhuj earthquake took place, his existing structures, which were four years old, nothing happened, but the brand new structures which he had built all collapsed because they were on a very rickety rickety foundation of a filled up land which did not offer any resistance and allowed the structures, RCC structures which were built on it to collapse. If you see a number of structures and the general reasons for the collapse. The engineered structures, the high rise structures, the main reason could be the structural design. Because many designers did not even follow the codes which were existing even prior to 2001. The construction practices are quite shameful and if the design is bad, then you are guaranteed that the structure will collapse. We don't really talk about maintenance and addition and alterations here because we found that most of the structures collapse due to deficiency in structural designs and construction practices. And of course, if there was maintenance required, it was neglected. And the addition and alterations were done in such a manner that inadequately designed and constructed buildings will collapse much faster if additions and alterations are done in the here is an example, a building which is one, two, three, four, five, six stories in Bunch after the earthquake was photographed and you can see no damage. Whereas the neighboring building occupants are already staying in the tents because their building collapsed completely. So there are some very well engineered structures, but there were not so many and they could not survive the earthquake. Here is a photograph which shows that some of these structures have completely failed, killing their occupants, some partially collapsed and some reasonably safe for at least allowing the people in these structures 
to run out of the building before a partial collapse or a complete collapse could take place. So these are different degrees of earthquake failures at one location. When an earthquake takes place, because of the ground level movement or underground movement, there is maximum shear force at the ground level. And if we have the structure on stilts, which was typical of Ahmedabad and various cities in Gujarat, what we call as a soft story, not S-T-O-R-Y, S-T-O-R-I. The soft story gives way and most of the structures lost their ground floor. Either causing serious damage to the entire structure or definitely causing some deaths or injuries to the people who are staying in these structures. Maximum lateral force takes place at the roof level. And if your lift shaft or if your water tanks are not properly anchored to take care of this lateral force, which is maximum at the roof level, they collapse. Sometimes they come down. Sometimes they are hanging, threatening to come down. And therefore, one has to be very careful when designing a high-rise building to see that all these structures at the roof level are anchored properly to the RCC framework. Minimum flexural strength of columns. This is very, very important. If columns are not stronger than the beams framing into a joint, what we call as strong beam, weak column at the joint, there is a likelihood of inelastic action which results in flexural yielding at both ends of all columns in a given story. And this story will just collapse. This results in column failure mechanism leading to a complete collapse or partial collapse of the structure. What precaution has to be taken as per the code is some of the moments at the faces of the joint corresponding the nominal flexural strength of the column framing into the joint should be 1.2 times or greater than the sum of the moments of the movements at the faces of the joint corresponding to the nominal flexure of the strength of the beams framing into the joint. So columns should be totally stronger by a factor of safety 1.2 times than that of the beam. If it is not happening, the columns will jump out and the buildings will collapse. At both ends, the columns will fail due to this flexural movement. And beams being stronger will just come down thereafter, but columns will be totally crushed. You can see here also weak column, strong beam action. Nothing has happened to the beams, but the columns have collapsed. In a soft story, there is a car park below, no protection, columns have, therefore, they have collapsed at the joint between the beam and the column. Sometimes the columns split open like this. This happens due to inadequate transfer reinforcement, which we call as shear reinforcement in the column. Maybe the diameter was inadequate, maybe the spacing, and maybe if it is a re-rolled steel, the quality of the steel may not be good 
as originally manufactured steel in a factory which makes steel adding particular certain chemicals to make it high yield steel but in the reload ring business this is missed out inadequate quality of concrete then results in crushing of the concrete and therefore the shear capacity of column is a question mark Columns are splice, and they should, of course, people should make sure the engineer, designer, and the constructor should make sure that during an earthquake, the structure undergoes inelastic deformation, resulting in tensile stresses in reinforcement approaching the tensile strength of the reinforcement. Now that means there is no factor of safety, and therefore there are chances of collapse. And in the splice region, there is a potential yield in members resulting in due to the earthquake forces. So one must not provide splices. Mechanical splicing is done to increase the height of the column or at the joints. Tie the reinforcement, vertical reinforcement. So splicing should not be at one point. The splices should be staggered so that the weakness of the column due to splicing, mechanical splicing, is distributed along the height of the column and not at one single region. I can show you here. Splicing was done. At a particular region of the column, and therefore the column collapsed, resulting in serious damage to the building. This is again strong beam, big column. The column has jumped out of its base and pierced into the into the slab. Above. So, RCC failure is a very serious failure when it takes place in a column. Transverse reinforcement, what we call as shear reinforcement. Transverse reinforcement is required to for required for confining the concrete and providing lateral support to the longitudinal reinforcement. Otherwise, if the transverse reinforcement fails, the longitudinal reinforcement will buckle and cause a failure of the concrete. Additional reinforcement is required to, risk the, to reduce the risk of the portion of the con concrete filling, falling away from the column. Now, sometimes what happens is due to inadequate transverse reinforcement, the part of the column, concrete, starts falling away and may fall or land on a human being causing death or serious injuries. So, spacing of the transverse reinforcement should not exceed one quarter of the minimum member dimension. This helps in concrete confining. So it's very important that due to the earthquake or due to any reason in a structure, if the transverse, transverse reinforcement gives way, it can cause serious damage and death. Serious damage to the structure and death to the human beings staying inside. Failure of a column due to inadequate transfer reinforcement, you can see here, one column has failed at a higher elevation, another at a lower elevation, the other columns are intact. Luckily, the structure has not collapsed completely because 
the beam and other columns are strong enough to take care of the load. These are two identical buildings built at the same time by the same contractor and the same design engineer. One of them has collapsed. The, uh, uh, you can see here, this is the lift room which has come down straight, shearing away. And also concrete in chunks falling down, very dangerous for a human being. This building is intact and the lighter side was when we visited this building. People were all saying that because the building which is intact is housing a police station, it did not collapse because of the law. But this building which was not housing a police station collapsed because the law was not present. This is a very serious collapse of Sri Ramji Lalan, Ramji Raoji Lalan College, which took place near Bhuj. Luckily, on that day was a Republic Day, so holiday, because if you see the inside of the structure, you can see the benches of the class. The slabs are now being supported by the benches. The reinforcement has completely come out of the columns and beams. I don't know what water cement ratio must have been used or what grade of concrete was used in the first place that it crushed to this extent within 90 seconds. The earthquake lasted for 90 seconds. Uh, it was not the Richter force, but the longer lasting of the earthquake, 90 seconds, could turn this RCC structure into rubble and powder. Haze goes waste. Here is another example. Swami Narayan School in Maninagar, a four-story building this is how it looked like before the earthquake was completed in four months because of the pressure of the client to finish the job as fast as possible, but crumbled and collapsed within 90 seconds after the earthquake. Here, unfortunately, because of the public holiday, unfortunately, the 11th standard students were called for an extra class because their exams were fast approaching and they became the victims of haste goes waste, including their sir who was conducting the extra classes. And there were people staying in the neighboring area could hear the cries of the victims for almost more than 24 hours because nobody could rescue them and gradually they all died. Shikar building had a board which says that two bedroom apartments semi-luxurious flats. And they really meant it because 50% of the apartments collapsed and 50% could stand there because they were supposed to be the luxurious part of the building. So one has to be very, very careful. Never enter a building which is semi luxurious. You don't know which part of the building you will be staying in. Staircase, parapets, and cantilever members are the most vulnerable RCC structures if they have not constructed and anchored properly to the main structure. Cantilever staircases should not be built in seismic areas. Such staircases act like diagonal bracing between 
the connected flows and get damaged fast. Diagonal bridgings are supposed to take care of the swaying of the building, etc. And during the earthquake, if there are horizontal forces which are occurring, they can get damaged. Staircases, whenever possible, be designed as winding staircases. In any case, steps should be rigidly connected on either side to the wall or the RCC frame of the building. Isolation of a staircase from the wall floor is advisable if the staircase is supported on the wall on one side and columns and beams on other side. So these are all the precautions which are given in the code where you are wanting to build staircases, one has to take all those precautions. You can see cantilever track is collapsed and people try to go out of the building via the staircase and they land up losing their lives because the staircases are not adequately designed, especially the cantilever design. Mumbai has still not taken lessons from cantilevers badly getting damaged due to the earthquake forces. You can see a beautifully architectured building with huge balconies cantilevering out. Fortunately, earthquake has not taken place in Mumbai to that extent. But one can never know. Mumbai is in zone three, Bhuj was in zone five. But look at Ahmedabad. How people have flouted, or not flouted, I would say, how people have adjusted their building architecture to get the maximum area from the FSI. Prior to the Bhuj earthquake, the biggest mistake done by the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation was calculating the FSI from column to column on the ground floor and multiplying it by the number of floors which the structure has been built for. This resulted in the area which was cantilever projecting on both sides or in all the sides of the cantilevers free of FSI. This was all free of FSI, only FSI on the, from column center to center on the ground floor into the number of floors was taken into consideration. Now, when you are having such large cantilever beams with floating columns on it, there are every likelihood of concrete not being poured adequately of proper density, giving the proper strength. And this can cause collapses. You can see here some portion of the building has collapsed in the cantilever region and killing people, damaging the building. You can see here most of the rubble has come down. And just for the sake of the FSI, the entire building has to be rebuilt. Mansi building, a very historic building because it lost 53 of its residents during the Bhuj earthquake in Ahmedabad. The builder had unauthorizedly taken out cantilevers and built up an extension to his flat on the topmost floor, had made a swimming pool on the roof and all sorts of cantilever projections to take care to flout the FSI after the building was approved. The builder himself was taking a swim in the swimming pool, unauthorized built, of course, and suddenly realized that his building is collapsing, jumped out from the 
swimming pool onto the adjoining building at the second floor level and saved his life. But little did he realize that he has lost eight members of his family who were in the structure extended by him, killing them on the spot, along with other totally 53 people died in this Mansi building collapse. Can you imagine earthquake taking place in Bhuj and an RCC engineered structure, of course, with a lot of unauthorized work done after the approval of the corporation collapse killing 53 people. Look at this Flamingo Hotel, very close to Bucha Way. We all know flamingos have thin legs. We never knew that Flamingo Hotel also had thin columns, which were inadequately designed to take care of the earthquake which took place causing a complete collapse of this hotel. Many inmates had occupied this hotel, which was just built one year back, were victims of, in this building. Talking about foundations, these are all provided in the code. If you read the code before you design the building, you can definitely take advantage of this building should be provided a rigid RCC foundation. Individual footings, if provided, should be tied by providing RCC beams both ways. Why? Because the foundations might move in different directions, causing the collapse of the entire structure. If it is an RCC raft, then it is always preferred because it will be built in such a manner that the load bearing will be better. Should in case the earthquake occurs, unlike the individual footings, each going in different direction, will avoid the entire collapse of the structure. Foundation for the structure should be constructed in one horizontal plane and not at different levels, which we observe in the hilly regions of Himalaya. So one has to be very, very careful when you are constructing structures on the slope of the hill or a mountain. One has to be careful if the Footings are at different elevations and not tied by way of RCC beams. Those structures will be very, very vulnerable to earthquake. You can see here footings, individual, not tied together, and portion of the building collapsing, some portion very badly damaged, and there was also casualties in this building due to the collapse. At the foundation level, Jalas Niti Apartments, a very beautiful looking four story structure before the earthquake, completely in rubbles after the earthquake. The findings were this building was built without plinth beams. So, plinth beams tie the footings together. But here there were no plinth beams, so the entire building gave way. Six people died. Thanks to the builder Nirav Shah. Another important phenomena which was noticed in some of the buildings. This is a six-story building is in Anjar. The soil strata was sandy soil, naturally, Bhuj being a desert region. During the earthquake, what happens to the sandy soil is 
suddenly the water table rises and the soil becomes like a liquid losing all its bearing capacity and the building just settles into the ground and they go as deep as anything you can imagine here you can see almost four stories have gone below ground while about two two and a half stories have remained up above ground in other buildings you can see many many buildings have just vanished into the ground because the sandy soil liquefied and killing people as well as destroying the entire structure some basic requirements have to be followed aim at symmetry in plan and elevation asymmetrical buildings provision should be made for the resulting torsional force which can take place i will show you some nice photographs of torsional effect on a building and the collapse of the building Torsional effect can be avoided in asymmetric buildings by dividing it into separate parts, considering each part as a separate structure. Then the torsional effect will not take place. Cracks of any magnitude due to any cause must be guarded against as the present, the plane of witness is always through the cracks during the earthquake. Additions and alterations to the structure should be avoided, especially done by non-engineered agencies, housing common man in the building. Now here is the Takshila building, how torsional failure has taken place in due to asymmetrical design. You can see here this had a ground floor whereas part of the building was on stilts what we call as a soft story and that gave way and the building separated in two parts and gave way especially along the bathroom toilet region can you imagine somebody having a bath or somebody sitting in the toilet suddenly finds that half the toilet is gone to some other place. This is the tragedy of Takshila. And, and they are showing you some buildings in Mumbai asymmetrically designed by eccentric designers and architects. I don't know you can see here, we just pray to God that no such earthquake takes place in Mumbai, at least in my lifetime and in the lifetime of the building, people staying in these buildings, posh buildings there. Otherwise, there will be serious problems. As it is, some of the buildings in Mumbai are collapsing uh, without any rhyme or reason because of bad construction, bad design, etc., and killing people left, right, and center. Because everyone goes scot free. Nobody knows who is the main culprit. And the builders get scot free, the architects, the designers, everyone gives some reason or the other to get out. Of this. Right. Here you can see staircase projecting out in cantilevers collapsing because they acted like diagonal bracings to the building. And you can imagine a person trying to escape from the earthquake damage would run down the staircase, but the staircase itself gives way and kills the person. And if the building is intact and he survives and lands on the ground floor and comes down comes the canopy on his head and he dies. So cantilevers are very, very dangerous. 
Here is a lift shaft. The only survivor around it, the building is collapsed completely. During fire, we say no, don't go into the lift shaft. But during the earthquake, lift shafts sometimes are safer than the rest of the part of the building. Here again, the lesson is you have not tied these structures together rigidly. To take an advantage from the lift shaft. When codes are not complied with, we have to rescue people by making openings in the slabs and try to go inside the world. There were there are many buildings which have collapsed in Mumbai also in the surrounding areas of Mumbai. Where old buildings or even sometimes not where so old buildings have collapsed and people have been or bodies have been excavated, people are already dead inside. You can see a part of the kitchen of the building. This is also a kitchen. This is a kitchen intact. These are the lower floors. What do you expect? Do we blame God for all this nonsense or do we blame ourselves? Survivors prefer to die and the dead have no one. Oh, sorry, I did not read it properly. Survivors prefer to die and the dead have no one to mourn for. Here he has lost his entire family. Here you can see a person, the only surviving person of the family, and they have written ash to ash, dust to dust. Who will mourn for him when he dies? He has lost his entire family. Think of the consequences before you build, or else it will be the same story which I told you today. There are codes available guiding the designer to ensure that you can build in the suitable zone, adequate RCC structures, taking all the precautions which were covered by me as far as possible in this lecture. Don't wait for the end of the road effect on your building. Consequences of disaster are known through history. Ruling dynasty in ancient China changed within one generation of a major earthquake. Today, one generation has taken place. 20 years back, we had a severe earthquake in Guj. Sorry. Nicaragua earthquake led to a revolution and overthrow of the US supported dictator in 1974. Tang Shang earthquake in 1973 ended the cultural revolution and started market reforms in China. Armenia earthquake in 1988 was a critical was critical and triggered a breakup of soviet union i was in soviet union during the armenian earthquake and we saw on the tv of course we could not understand the russian language which was being broadcasting uh, the seriousness of the earthquake but we could all see that their precast structures all failed at the joints and most of the structures constructed in Tashkent, where we were residing, and in various places in Uzbekistan, they were all precast structures and they were terrible at the construction joints. Buj earthquake 2001 triggered the downfall of the chief minister of Gujarat state. So, we have also paid our price in earthquake, so are the politicians and dictators. 
Now to end this lecture in a slightly humorous note. note. This is history of the Babylonian days. Uh, these are inscriptions which were translated from the Hebrew language to English. The Code of Hammurabi, 1730 BC. So many years back, people had similar problems. If a contractor builds a house for a man and does not build it strong enough, and the house which he builds collapses and causes the death of the house owner, then the contractor will be put to death. He has killed a man and he is to be put to death. But if you kill more and more and more, then I don't know. Like in India, we always pardon the agencies involved, including the statutory agencies. The next law, if it destroys property, he, the contractor, shall replace what has been destroyed. And because he did not build the house strong enough and it collapsed, then the contractor shall rebuild the house at his own cost. So there were all such very strict laws existing even during the Babylonian days by the code of Hammurabi. The final clause is very, very scary. If a contractor builds a house for a man and does not build it strong enough, and the house which he builds collapses and causes the death of the house owner's wife, then he, the contractor, shall supply the owner with a woman of equal value. For the present days, this is very, very scary. And even in the past Babylonian days, people found that if a man wanted to get rid of his wife, he would request the contractor to construct a house and make sure that he is not staying in that house. And if it collapses, he will get a replacement from the contractor. So gentlemen, we end our lecture and if you have any engineering sense, any sincerity in the pro profession, yes, earthquake is a man-made calamity. Don't blame God. You can construct structures which can withstand the greatest of greatest earthquakes without killing a human being or the little damages to the structure. Thank you. Thanks, Shelly, Kaushik, and Ashwarya, and team of Ukraine for allowing me to give my thoughts on earthquake. I thank my wife, she's always present during my presentations for our guidance and all participants for your presence and good wishes. If you have any questions, you please email to shelly at qcreteindia.com and it will be a pleasure to reply to the 10 best questions selected by Shelly's team. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to all the audience on this uh, on this uh, wonderful Saturday. As usual, uh, Dodi sir has given a very beautiful lecture, and uh, I am uh, getting a lot of uh, messages. Some structural engineers. Especially people who are in the field of forensic engineering, appreciating uh, the uh, wonderful lecture. And uh, we are uh, for a very good lecture. Some of the slides, uh, some of the slides are really uh, uh, bringing us.
a lot of awareness in this field and uh, i am again thankful to you on behalf of kukrit for this wonderful lecture thank you sir thank you thank you have a good day Any and questions? Uh, uh, the our August gathering audience can send to send to us, and uh, we will try to answer and uh, get back to you quickly. Thank you, Dodi sir, once again for this beautiful lecture. Kaushi, Kaushi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, how many? Yes, sir. I am online. Uh, just tell me how many people attend finally. You can just, tell me just, later. Uh, uh, sir, we'll come back. Ah, yeah. Just yes, yeah. I will come back to you. Yes, okay. yes. Bye. Bye. Yeah.